Did that happen after your dad had passed that you got pregnant? Yes. Your dad sent that child back to you. Where are you all from? We're in Florida, Tampa, Florida. Oh my God, well, perfect. I'm so glad that you guys are here. There's a couple souls that are coming through. So first of all, your dad passed? Yeah. So know that that's his way of acknowledging that he's stepping forward on the other side to let you know that he's here. And also when I'm connecting, there's a child that's here as well that also has passed on. So yeah. where was the child that was lost? I had a miscarriage. Okay, that soul is with your dad. Because when I'm connecting, I saw this baby that was here, which is his way of letting you know that not only is he there, but that child that you lost is there as well. And this was a very early on pregnancy that this child was lost, by the way. He's showing yeah. me yeah. Because you know what's crazy? Did you already have the son here in this world? Yes. Do you know that that son was actually reborn? <gasps> this is what I saw. I saw a, a miscarriage happen. I saw a soul leave this world and go to the other side. And did that happen after your dad had passed that you got pregnant? Yes. Your dad sent that child back to you. Because here's what happens. Let's say you're carrying a child for six months and then you lose that child. Those mm -hmm. souls sometimes go to the other side. They don't come back down, unfortunately, because it was too far along. That soul that you lost, that little boy, was never able to enter you. You lost that child so early on. That soul was never able to come down from heaven. So that soul waited with your dad on the other side. And then what I saw is your dad showed me that he had that boy there and that afterwards... He sent that boy back to you. Wow. <laughs> so that miscarriage that you had, that was just a trial and error. That son actually is um, very lucky because like I said, that soul left and came back. Is that not amazing? Yeah, it's <laughs> very accurate. <laughs> and did you name that son after your dad? My first one. Because your dad was telling me, Matt, you know, they named children after me. He's telling me they named children after me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's so proud of that. Your dad's like this on the other side. Yeah. That is so, he thinks that is so amazing that your children, he's still a part of their life, even though that he had passed on. First of all, your dad says to me this, he wants to thank you all for keeping him alive here in this world. He goes, I got to tell you the hardest thing that I went through here in this world was I did not want to die. No. He says, I did not want to leave this world. He says, Matt, I fought every single day, every day, Matt. He says, I fought, he says, to stay alive, to be with my family. And the one thing that he wants you to know is that he became religious at the very end as well. He yeah. tells me, he goes, Matt, I asked God for more time. I was willing to do anything. He yeah. says, but I'm, unfortunately says my body was just failing me. And your father tells me that you brought him to different doctors. Oh he tells me that one doctor would say, no, we're not doing that. And he'd be like, okay, we're not gonna stop. We're gonna get in the car. We're gonna see another doctor. We're gonna go to another hospital. And your father goes, Matt, when we did it all, we did it all. He even yeah. so, he's whispering in my ear, experimental treatments. There was some type of experimental treatments that your dad did that really not many people know about or nobody knows about. Is that true? Yes. yes. Because your father goes to me, Matt, he goes, I got to tell you something. He goes, what I went through, he goes, I wouldn't wish it on a dog. He goes, I suffered. He goes, and my, he goes, my family knows I was in pain every day. He said, but I was grateful. He says, I was so happy. He says to be here and to be with them. And your dad says to me, I want them to know not to feel guilty because if the, there was nothing that anyone could say that we didn't try because we did. Yeah. And what your dad tells me is that you all kept him going here in this world. You were the ones that, you know, kept him motivated. Yeah. And, and who's this with you on the side of you? This? Yep. My mom. Okay, just making sure, because you look young here when I'm connected. <laughs> he was telling me that's my wife, but I'm like, you know what? I don't want to be wrong. I don't know. She looks very young. Yeah. But I know that it's his way of acknowledging that he's here with you as well. Your husband just steps forward. He says, can you talk to my wife? And he says to me, Matt, he goes, I want to let her know one thing. He says to me that you were the most important thing to him here in this world. And you felt the same way about your husband. He wants to thank you for all the patience that you had with him. Because your husband's <laughs> laughing about this. He goes, Matt, you should know my wife. She has no patience here in this world. He says, she's the most least patient person. <laughs> ever he goes, but when I was sick, he goes, and when things started going wrong with me, he says, she stayed by my side. He goes, she didn't care. He says she had all the patience in the world. And your husband just wants to thank you for that. Thank you. you. Know, I got to tell you something. He wants to thank you for the pictures that you had done for him. And he says to me, Matt, I'm, I'm in all their houses. They all have these beautiful pictures that I didn't get to see done here in this world, but I see them now on the other side. He wants to thank you for keeping him there and with you through the holidays, because he talks about the holidays where you set out a plate and you talk about him at the dinner table and about all the different things that you do. And Matt, he goes, I got to be honest with them. I wouldn't have been so afraid of dying if I knew what I knew now. And what I know now is that I can watch over them every single day. And not only that, but he tells me that he's able to watch over your son. Now, what's crazy is this, that son, that, that son that was born after your dad's 
departure, that soul is very sensitive. And your son is a very, very sensitive individual. So much so that I feel that he senses and feels spirit. Yes, he does. <laughs> he does. And you know why? Because anytime that happens, that type of reincarnation type of situation where, you know, he was supposed to be born, it didn't happen. His soul went back to the other side and then he waited and then you got pregnant again and he re-entered that soul. Your son has really been to heaven twice, which is so amazing because people think that we start our journey here in this world. Well, we may start our physical journey here in this world, but our soul actually starts on the other side. And that's why sometimes our loved ones in spirit can see if we're having a boy or girl you know, are having twins before we can. So know that, you know, your son is already very gifted in that way. And your son actually has met your father even before he was born, which is so crazy. Crazy because he talks about him. <laughs> he talks about your dad? Yeah. That's crazy. Like, he'll just like, like, oh, I, I just saw Poppy or like, he'll say weird things like that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> well, listen, they're not weird. Know that one of the things that he's probably recalling is him being back in heaven when he was waiting with your dad. So what I want you to know is this, write down all of those experiences because your son's going to forget about that. He's not going to yeah. remember any of that. Yeah. Or he might think it's a dream, but it is real. And know that that's just beautiful, a beautiful validation that your dad was there. And I got to tell you something else. Your dad also tells me that you were having issues getting pregnant or carrying. He tells me that. And you know that your dad was the one that helped you through that from the other side. So when you really wanted that son and you were saying, I just want one more, I just want one more, because he's telling me you saying this, your dad, when he got to the other side and he saw what had happened, he was the one who helped you to have your son here today. And that's the reason why that son has such a strong bond with your dad. And by the way, he's telling me that I need to come to you in the back. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you're the other sister? Yeah. Because your father goes, talk to her, because she's going to say, Matt, that I, it's all about my sister and it's not about <laughs> He tells me that throughout your life, you are, you always felt like you're the forgotten one. Oh my <laughs> God. He goes, and Matt, he goes, I'm not starting that shit in heaven. <laughs> he goes, I already had to live it. He goes, you got to be, you take one kid for an ice cream cone and not the other. He goes, this is conspiracy theory. So he says, can you please let my, let my daughter know that I'm, you know, watching over her as well. But I can tell you something, your dad's teasing you a little bit because they always used to bust your balls because you're, you're, you're a little bit of a late bloomer here in this world. You did everything late. He says you dated late. You want to have children late. Like everything is just, you, you do things on your own time schedule. Your dad's telling me, is that true? Yeah. So your dad says to me, Matt, he goes, let her know that I'm there and I'm watching over her. He says, but there's not much I can help her with. He's, he says, because she's already got her mind made up. He says, and there's already things. He says that she's already got set in stone and you got to know my other daughter. He goes, when she says something, she does it. Nobody can help. Nobody can convince her otherwise. Yep. <laughs> and your dad is acknowledging that. But he says to me one thing. He goes, tell her she needs to stop being so insecure. And your dad tells me you need to stop worrying about your weight. <laughs> <laughs> your father says to me that you're worried about working out. He shows me you working out and doing these weird exercises. He shows me. I, I try. But, uh... <laughs> he says, tell her she's beautiful the way she is. Tell her to stop stressing out, stop worrying. He says, because Matt, she wants to do these crazy things. He says, next thing you know, you want to eat like vegan or some shit. And he's <laughs> oh my God. Why are you doing that? He's been experimenting just, with all of that. <laughs> I know your father tells me. He, and he, you know why he's telling me this? Because he knows you and he knows that the minute that you go off of this, you're going to be like, well, that's great for you. You heard from dad and I did it. <laughs> dad's watching over you. Dad helped you get pregnant. Dad helped you with your son, but he didn't help me. <laughs> He says to me, he goes, listen, you tell her, he goes, she can do things that are healthy, he says. He goes, but tell her not to worry, not to stress over these things, he says, because she gets on these tears and she wants to eat paleo, she wants to do this, she wants to do that. He goes, tell her she's beautiful the way she is, he says, and I want her to know that from heaven. <laughs> okay, now this is, now also when I'm connecting, is there also Kenny? Yeah, his, that's my grandfather's brother. That soul is also here when I'm connecting. And then there's also as well a Tommy that's there as well. Wow. That's our ne that's my him. nephew. Yeah. They're all together in heaven. Wow. So please know that that soul is also there because this is what I'm talking about, how souls will come through. All of those souls are there and with you, watching over you on the other side. And I want you to know one thing. Your dad tells me that this is what heaven's like. When you go through the pictures of everyone that had passed on and you're saying, oh my God, I miss all these people. Your dad says, we're always right there and with you. So don't be upset. He goes, know that I'm there and I am okay. One last thing. He tells me, don't go crazy with the tattoos. <laughs> You're all trying to get tattoos in memory of Kim. And that's to me. Yeah, that's definitely to her. So what happened? You got a tattoo of your husband? Of his hand, yes. His, 
But why are you trying to add to it? You keep saying, I want to keep adding more because your father- Yeah, he's got it right now. Your brother's going like this, going, he's like, it's getting crazy. Getting crazy. <laughs> yeah, he never liked tattoos. <laughs> your father said, I wish you could see things differently. He goes, because all there is between us right now is a curtain. It's called a veil. He goes, if you lifted it up, you would see the way that I come to visit your son. You would see the way that I'm there with you wondering why the hell you're cooking these crazy meals, you know, and, and worried about your diet. He goes, I see my wife in bed talking to me at night before she goes to bed. He goes, I see all of this. And this is proof and validation. He says that I'm keeping everybody together here in heaven. He says, and while you are keeping everyone together here in this side, he says, that's what's most important because one day we will all be together again. Wow, it's <laughs> amazing. I really hope that this helped you.